Hello fellow police uh, constables. So uh, in today's video we are going to be showing you how to establish a proper cordon in, in pretty much every location and for any incident and I'm going to go into details into what cordon will be established for what particular incident that is taking place. Uh, so the first one will be the motorway. So just imagine that you are now essentially approaching the scene of the RTC that is in lane one and two or four, which is lane, this lane, that lane, that lane, and that lane. Okay, so let's say it's just about here. We get our matrix board, turn, turn it on, and we'll go to the road it's closed. Or you can go to the arrow right, which a lot of, which I highly recommend to do actually. The next thing you do is never ever reverse on the motorway, but I'm just doing this for uh, educational purposes. And I didn't allow myself up quickly. So make sure you're in the middle of uh, the, the lanes that you're closing. If it's on a three lane, just be in, for example, uh, this lane here, like this. Okay. And you can see your badge sort of thing in the centre, the logo of the company the vehicle is. Try and make that centre with the road marking that you are to the lane that you're closing. So, for example, lane two, uh, one and two. Make sure it's like this. Um, then you can get your police plate balls, which is just here, and this is your cone. Now, what I see quite a lot is people tend to do something on the lines of this. Okay, uh, that is very incorrect. In fact, it can kill someone. And the reason why is it isn't a proper, nice, slow, gentle merge and turn sort of thing. It's just a straight cut. Okay, so if someone's distracted by the or something or checking the second monitor they will very quickly crash right back at you okay so how do we do it um, this is how you properly do the cordon okay so as you can see each road marking has an end point you will place one down at the end of each road marking okay to make sure you have the correct separation distance uh, furthermore, emergency vehicles can fit through this. I'll demonstrate that at a later stage. Okay. And for the one that's going to merge and turn, you're going to be set up like this just before the merge and turn. Then you very, very slowly, not too steep, because if it's too steep, then, like I said, it's very easy to get crashed into. And then just as you get to the end, you really do make sure it really does go up very very gently okay that to me looks on average somewhat like the perfect sort of merge and turn okay now there's a few different controversies in terms of how you park your car i said to make sure that your logo of the company is pretty much hang on center with the road marking however if you are in close proximity to the scene or the rtc or whatever incident taking place in front of you I highly suggest that you. Oh, why am I going on that side? I highly suggest you park your car at a 45 degree angle, so something like this uh, on the lens. Because if your vehicle gets struck um, from behind, actually, I just forgot something. Make sure your vehicle that way. So, if your vehicle gets struck from behind, and let's say someone is being treated just here, for example. You are protecting uh, the emergency workers and also the person who's been treated, aka uh, the patient. If you get struck from behind either by a HGV or a vehicle going over 70 or under 70, your vehicle will roll forwards if your handbrake is not on. Um, even if it is on, it will still move forwards if it is a HGV or even a car if it's high speed. So if your vehicle is at a 45 degree angle, and your tyres also turn, but it doesn't really matter because it's real block physics after all. So let's say you just got hit at 70 mile an hour by a car. You get put straight into the crash barrier. Okay? And I would be treated somewhere along here. So you are safe from being struck by a police vehicle. Okay? If you are to be struck while you are parked straight, uh, within the line and you are within uh, close proximity to the vehicle the closure and you get struck from behind as you can see you're just going to keep rolling I'm not, I'm not pressing any key whatsoever I'm still rolling and the reason why it wouldn't stop on its own is because there's nobody to physically break it however if there was a, if there was a handbrake or a bargain brake that you want to call it uh, on um, this is how it would 
go. So back to Shanga. Just when I believe it was. So just pretend that my parking brake's on, but I can't have it on because I will actually went back to me. So let's say I got stuck. It should stop in time. Um, but you know, you never know. So I highly suggest either have your wheels turn up that so if you do ever get stuck, you will most likely just go straight to the barrier, which will probably be unlikely if you get stuck because if no one's actually in the driver's seat then it will push you all forwards basically. It might not, I'm not really too sure, I've not physically tested it out, I'm just basing off of IRL physics really. Uh, after all this is Roblox physics, not IRL. But yeah, I highly suggest you have it uh, at at least a 45 degree angle or 35 degree angle. You don't want it too sharp and the reason being because if, in fact this is, I, I presume that's like a 30 degree angle if a little bit less. If you go all the way back over here you can still see the arrows, okay. Probably can't see it now, but you can see it when you get quite close. But if you have your vehicle at an angle where it's pretty much 45 to 50 degrees like this, so if you do get stuck and you don't hit the pedestrian, you can't actually see the matrix board from this point. You can see it a little bit, but you're not going to see it very well. And you probably won't see it until the very last second, if not at all, depending on your graphics settings. So, in my opinion, if you are going to have it lean towards a class barrier, you have it very, very little. Something like this, would, even something like this would be perfect, because if they've been treated in lane 2, your vehicle would just go into lane 1 and go past them. That makes sense. So I'd argue something like that will be a little bit more beneficial than having it directly to your left. So as you can see, it's still visible. You probably won't be able to see it from this far back, but you get the idea. The closer you get, it's a lot more visible. Where as if it's more at a 45 to 50 degree angle, it's not really going to be that visible whatsoever. So just make sure you are within reasonable. You know, just make sure you. Do it properly and think about the risks and think what to benefit of doing it like, having it like this. Does it um, justify for the risks? How far away are they from the vehicle and all that jazz? Um, now, something else as well regarding your red E left lights as well, which is your back reds. Oh, no mind, this vehicle don't really doesn't have it very visibly, so I wouldn't worry about that in this vehicle. If you're in an LPU vehicle, this is also applied to you as well. Okay, uh, this is the same as well if it was on the other side, so it's the same for either side. Okay, uh, now a full motorway closure is essentially just how you see, not how we do it in a picture. Currently, with a way of course, make sure there's no gaps to get through and you're good. Now, I mentioned at the start um, when I played the coming down, there's enough gap so you can actually. Emergency services, if they're responding, can just go through without you having to remove the cones, as you can see. Now some people may use that to advantage, just try and just make sure you keep your eye out at all times in my opinion. Uh, it's quite easy for people to just use that for their advantage, but yeah. That is how you do it. Don't forget, uh, the cone before you start the making turn uh, is like that. Because that's what often people tend to forget. Okay, uh, the next part will be in a busy town centre. Now when I say busy, I don't mean busy in terms of a lot of people in the area. I mean busy in terms of the high rises and uh, the location. So I'll see you there. Okay, so you join me on the high street just near the police station. Um, so if you need to road, if you need to do a road closure on this road, for example, um, I beg for the love of God, do not do it close to the scene. So, for example, let's say the RTC or whatever there is going on at this place, even a robbery in the uh, jewelry store, do not just close it from this point. And the reason why that is because there's no diversion points. Okay. Um, yeah, there's legitimately no diversion points, so no one can do a safe turnaround. So they probably could, but you get the idea. Um, it's just inconvenient for people. So I highly recommend if it's a high street like this, you go to the uh, entrance or exit of the road. Uh, for example, this is the entrance last exit of the road. You part hopefully within the middle of the road. Matrix on, and for this matrix, I'm going to put it on as road closed because there's nothing else that will have uh, the same effect. You can't have um, the arrows in. Uh, opposite directions at the same time, so unfortunately you're going to have to have road closed, which is not a big deal. Okay, um, I I recommend to have the cones in the middle of each way of marking, and uh, quite close to it as well. This is to prevent anyone from trying to uh, basically get past it, um, trespass and whatnot. Okay, 
do not only use the cones, we have a wide variety of these uh, signs as well. Now bear in mind, the plating board is a little bit fucked and you have to keep pressing uh, the change one for it to get to different ones. Um, so some of them are empty, some of them are not. So I'm going to put a row close sign there, one spang in the centre and then one right at the end as well. Okay, so that's going to be three row close signs and if you really wanted to, uh, you can put the barriers on the pavement, but it's up to you. Um, I personally wouldn't. But, you know. If you want to, as well, you can put pleating in on the remaining two, but it looks a little, a little bit unprofessional having loads and loads of these signs. So I recommend this is the perfect setup for that. It will hopefully be the same on the other side. Um, so it will also be at the entrance last exit of the road over there. The reason why it should be at the entrance last exit of the road, this is not just for this road, this is for any road that I'm talking about. It could be, uh, I can't fly in one second. It could just, it could also be, for example, this road. Don't close it here, close it there. Um, give people a diversion option so they can either go straight, uh, well, that's the only option actually. They'll have to go, they'll have to continue straight and then turn left and then go that direction, for example. If they stop and say, let me through, just say no, and if they need to, give them directions and just say, continue from this road, then turn left and then take into the left and then you can continue from where you want to go. Okay, um, that is as simple as that. Now, if there is a dead body uh, found or whatever, uh, you will use uh, police tape. Um, now, it is standard police tape, I believe. Yes, it is. So, a lot of people seem to get this wrong on t in terms of how to actually connect it. They tend to just connect it from the ground, for example, like this. And it really pisses me off. Uh, and that is actually floating. Oh god, they all are. Okay, that's a development issue I need to fix. Thank you very much for the video for finding out, Jesus. Yeah, so we tend to attach it to our actual vehicles, so make sure it's within like chest height. Actually, that is a bit high, so, but yeah, yeah, if I can if you move it, because you can walk underneath it, that's not really very beneficial, is it? So I'm going to remove that using R. So something like chest height, so let's say just underneath the brake light. Again, something chest height uh, about there. There you go, and mm, I'd still say it's a little bit high. Um, there you go, that's better, that's a lot better. So something like this is a lot better. Okay, now this one uh, is going to be connected to the McDonald's. Yeah, because there's nothing else you can connect it to. There you go. So that is how I've done the police tape here. Now you don't just put police tape in these two places, okay? You also try and cover the entire car park to prevent people from getting past this location as well. Okay? It's not just about the place you are located, it's about everything everywhere. People will find a place anywhere to try and get past and use it in a scooter. Oh well, this area wasn't closed off. Even something as basic as this bit here, you can close this part off as well. Just so you know every bit is closed off. Um also, because it's a public puff, uh, footpath as well, anyone can just walk down here. This area has to be closed off as well. Okay, so you're going to go from this building here. So, as, I'd argue the corner of the building, actually. So, like I said, sending the chest, I did press that, very good. And go to this tree, or mm, would it go to this tree? No, let's go to the second tree. There you go. And then go from this tree to this hedge. And there you go, you've now got this area cordoned off. Okay, so that bit is cordoned off, so no one can get past there. No one can get past through here. No one can get past through there, or there, there, there. Um, if you really want to go the extra mile, actually it wouldn't be necessary to do one here either. If you wanted to, you're more than welcome to. Just do not do something along the lines of this, which really did piss me off as well. Just do not close off the god half the goddamn pavement. I just please don't. Oh, I played too many freaking things for it to be removed. That's something else as well. Please tape is a little bit of a gamble sort of thing to use. Sometimes it removes itself. Sometimes it doesn't. To remove it, you press R. You have to go quick hit and then press R. But if you play quite a lot, or if you reset or something it will not get removed so the only way to remove it is to get an admin with tool and they'll have to select this particular part for example uh, it doesn't remove for me i've also got b-tool to mind that so 
So you'll have to remove. Oh, can I get that bit? I can't get that bit, but I forgot. No, right, I'm gonna have to remove my vehicle. But yeah, that's how you set up a cordon for not only an RTC or any incident, but this is the the, 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 the tape is optional. It's mostly used for um, murder investigations or crime scenes or that sort of stuff. But you wouldn't see it for an RTC, put it that way, unless it was fatal. If it was fatal, then yes, 100%. I can't select that, god damn it, that pissed me off a bit now, that is. That is actually really starting to get on my nerves. There you go, I've got it. There you go, yeah, you just probably have to go look into the sky and then select it like that. Well, yeah, that's how you select it if you are an admin um, in a police service. Uh, that is that. I don't think there's anything else, is there? I'm not really too sure, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how you set up a cordon on the motorway and also how to do it on a normal road and also how to set up a murder uh, crime scene um, cordon as well. Okay, I hope this was useful. This is the first video of the police training sort of videos and have a great day.